In this video, we will look at an important concept in object-oriented programming, which is polymorphism. When we talked about inheritance before, we said that we have an is a relationship between the subclass and the superclass. So an object of the subclass is also considered an object of any of its superclasses. So this will allow me to use a reference of the parent class or the superclass to point to an object of the subclass and that's, that is the basis of um, polymorphism. So we can use the same method called for any object in the hierarchy using the superclass object reference. So let's look at a very simple example here. We have a pet class, that's my parent class. It has a public method eat, which is a void method. We have the bird class that is inheriting from the pet class, and it's also overriding the eat method. We have another subclass, the dog class, that is also inheriting from the pet class, and it's also overriding the public eat method. So since the dog is a pet and the bird is a pet, I can create an object reference of the type pet that could be pointing to a dog or to a bird. Since the dog is a pet, I can have an object reference of the type pet that is pointing to a dog or that is pointing to a bird. So let's implement that in Java and see why polymorphism is helpful for me. I'm going to start by creating my pet class, the parent class. And let's create a package here. And in my pet class, I'll just add one method, which is public void eat. And let's just print out a statement system dot out dot print line pet is eating. I'm going to create another class, which is the dog class. And then we will inherit from the pet class. So we'll extend, extends pet. And I will override the eat method. To override a method, we have to provide the same method signature. So public void and eat. And I will just print out system.out.println. The dog is eating. I will create my third class, which is the bird class. It will also extend the pet. So bird extends pet. And we will override the eat method or eat method. So public void eat. And we'll just say system.out.println. The bird is eating. To test my classes, I'm just going to create a main class that has the main method. So main class, and I'll check the public static void main. And in here, I can start creating objects of these classes. Now, the, the regular way we do um, create objects, we use the class name as our object reference. So dog, for example, v1 equals new dog. So that will allow me to create an object of the dog class. And I can call the method eat, which is in the dog class with the dog object. So if I run this, it will say that the dog is eating. I can do the same thing with my bird class. So bird um, b1 equals new bird. And then I can say b1 dot eat. Same thing, when we run it, we will get back um, the bird is eating. Now the idea for polymorphism, instead of using the object reference as the actual class of the object, we can create the object reference using the parent class reference. So pet d1 is actually pointing to a dog. Since the dog is a pet, the pet reference could be pointing to an object of the type dog. Same thing with this pet, which is a bird. Pet b1 is pointing to a new bird. If we run it, we'll see we will not have any problems and the program will run in the same way it did before. So why is this helpful? 
This will actually allow me to create a collection of the superclass reference, and each object reference is pointing to a different type or to a different subclass object. So for example, I can create a pet array. So pet, square brackets, that indicates that this is an array, and let's call it pets, equals to a new array of pets, and let's say the size is 5. So I'm creating an array of pet references. Each one of these five references will be pointing to a pet. Now this pet could be an actual object of the class pet, it could be an object of the class dog, or it could be an object of the class bird since all these classes are considered as a pet. So I can go here and say pet or pets at location zero is equal to a new dog. Pets at location one is equal to a new bird. And so on, we can continue with the other three elements in our array. So notice I only needed one type of array, which is the pet array. And inside it, we can store different types of objects that belong to the pet um, super class. So we have the dog, which is a subclass of the pet class, and we have the bird, which is a subclass of the pet class. This will also allow me to iterate through these different types of objects using a single for loop. So I can have a for loop that iterates through the pets array, so integer i equals 0, i is less than pets dot length, and then i plus plus, and then for each one of these pets, whether they are a dog or a bird, I can feed it or make it eat. So what will that do? It will go to the pet array at location 0, for example, we have a dog, we are calling the eat or eat method in that dog class or in that dog object and we are feeding that dog. So let me copy these in here and let's actually have five elements in my array. So in location two, location three, and location four. If we run this now and delete these two previous pets, if we run this now, we are feeding a dog, a bird, a dog, a bird, and then we are feeding the last dog in our array. So how will this work? At runtime, we are going to check the actual object. So we have at pets location zero, we have a dog. We are going to check inside the dog, do we have the eat method? Since we have the eat method, this eat method will be called, and that's why we are printing out the dog is eating. So at runtime, the object, the actual object itself, we will be checking do we have that method or not. If we have it, we use it. If we do not, we'll go to the um, parent class and execute that method in the parent class. So if I created a new class here, and let's call this class cat, and we did not include the eats method here, we will extend the pet, so extends pet. And we did not actually override the eat uh, method. If I go back to my main class and replace my last object in that array and replace it with a cat, what will happen when we run it? At location 5 in that, or location 4 in that array, we are calling the eat method for the cat. So we go to the cat class. Do we have an eat method here? We do not. So we'll go to the parent class. And that will be the method that we are calling for that cat, which is going to print pet is eating. Now the other way will not work for us. So if we had a special method in our cat class, so for example, we have a special method here that is not available in the parent class that we are not overriding from the parent class. So let's say public um, void, and let's call this method, for example, speak. And we are printing here system dot out dot print line let's say meow so this method is a special method that is only available for the cat object if we go here and we say we want to add um, reference uh, or the fifth object in the pets array we want to make that cat speak now this will give me an error so if i try here instead of this for loop 
if I try here and say that pets at location four dot speak, you will see that I will not get that method as a suggestion. Why? All the methods that we can use with the reference pet have to be in the pet class. So if I want to use them, they are either in the pet class only, or they are in the subclass overriding the method in the pet class. So in my pet class, do we have a method called speak? We do not, so that will give me an error before I even compile the program. So to be able to use a method with the parent reference, this method has to be in that parent class. If we are overriding it in the subclass at runtime, Java will check if it's available in the subclass or not. Before we compile, the method that we are calling has to be in the object reference. So do we have a speak method in the pets class? We do not, so that's why we are getting this error, which will say that the method speak is undefined for the type pet. So if we want to call a method that is only available in the subclass, we need to cast that reference to be of the type subclass. So we want to cast the pets at location four to be an actual cat object for this operation. So to cast, we can use the explicit casting like we used with the primitive data types. So before the object itself, we'll put parentheses and the data type that we want to cast to. So we want to cast the pets into, um, or the pets at location four into the type cat. And then once we are done casting it, we can call the method speak, which is available in that cat class. Now, if I run it, you will see we will be making that cat speak. Now, this will only work if the object at this location is actually an object of the class cat. If we try to do it with the object at location three, which is a bird, we will be getting a runtime error, which will tell me that this does not work. So class cast exception, the bird cannot be cast to um, a cat. Why? Because the bird is not a cat. So that's why it will not work. So how can we check before we cast the object? Is it an object of that class that we want to cast to or not? We can use the instance of keyword. So if the object that we want to cast, which is pets at location three, if it's an instance of the class cat, we will be casting that object into a cat. So instance of will check, is this object an instance of this class? If it is an instance of this class, we'll be getting back true. And since the result of this if statement is true, we are going to execute this line. Otherwise, we will not be casting that object into the cat class. So if we run it now, this will not run, this line will not run, and we avoided that exception. So if we have an array and we do not know how many cats we have in that array and we want to make all our cats speak, but we do not know where are the cats at or how many cats we have in that array, we can use the same for loop. So for integer i equals zero, i is less than um, pets.length and then i plus plus. We want to check is the current object a cat? So if pets at location i is an instance of cat, in that case, we want to cast that object into a cat. So we want to cast that object into a cat, which is the object at location i, so pets at location i. We are casting it into a cat, and then we are calling the speak method for that object. So if we run it now, we'll see that it only executes once because we only have one cat in here. If I had more cats and we run it again, you'll see that since we have two cat objects, we have two cats speaking in this for loop.